Hey guys, welcome to Code Tech and Tutorials. My name is Matt, and I just want to do a quick update on this uh, game engine thing I've been working on and doing some videos on. And just kind of let you know where it's at and what I'm doing next. Uh, last video I talked about uh, kind of revamping the core underlying loop behind how the how it all runs. Um, and I'm still on that, but I've I've gone a lot of different directions, and I've learned actually quite a few things recently about to how to better handle projects and how to better scale them. So uh, I just want to talk a little bit about that. So let me just bring it over here. So here is the project. It's called Ancient Archer. It is a game engine and I've got a master branch which hasn't been updated in quite a while. Um, and if you open Visual Studio, if you uh, clone it and open it in Visual Studio, you'll basically notice that uh, it just runs a bunch of little demos of just to make sure it's working. So in the development, a lot of stuff has been going on. It's uh, it is somewhat chaotic and I've actually, uh, let's see here. I've kind of redone, let's see, a lot of things. Well, I started kind of revamping the way I was doing the libraries and I was doing it one way and then I started to realize that I could do it another way. So it's a, it's in a state of transitioning yet again. So one of the big things I want to get in this development branch is, uh, well, animations. It's probably not going to get pushed to master until all the libraries are done and all the uh, animation, the new animation stuff is done and also have some shader stuff to work out. So I actually haven't been working on it a whole lot. I've got some past iterations in these releases. These were basically the little demos a friend and I kind of put together a long time ago, back when I was, you know, over a year ago at this point, basically, I just uh, released them at some point because I wanted to save their state, but they're yeah, it's sort of little demos that you can uh, you can run if you just want to see examples of OpenGL, but they're nothing really to write home about. Um, let's see here. So I guess I'll talk about more of where it's going. So I'm just going to launch Visual Studio here because that's what I've been running this on. I actually haven't spending, been spending a whole lot of time on this recently because I've been spending a lot more time uh, on this on some other repos under Dark Tactics, uh, DM Power and just kind of messing with libraries and building libraries which has been a lot of fun to me recently and so i'm on the dev branch here and as you can see we have a lot of code over on the side and a lot of things going on but if i look at my my git stuff here from github i have made some recent changes I kind of I redid all the libraries basically a couple days ago. I spent like a whole day reanalyzing and redoing all the libraries, and it was sort of a mess. So if I go to the properties here and go to C++, you can see all the includes there, and same with all the linkers. I've got all the linkers set up. So I've got OpenGL, GLW, SDL, SDL Mixer, and Asimp for loading stuff. And I've got it all set up, but it's all like manually configured. And I have found a way to not have to manually configure all of these. That is just so much better and scales so much better. So I'm going to redo it yet again. It's, uh, I learned a lot. We'll say I spent like a whole day messing with these libraries. It was literally a full day studying and figuring out how to get them all included. And I was using a method where I would clone it with GitHub, uh, build it and then map it to this. And, and then right after I finished all that work, I learned about submodules in GitHub. Now, submodules in GitHub basically allow you to do this. Just, just check this out. All right. So uh, if you, you can't actually do it in Visual Studio. So that's, that's a thing. You have to open Git Bash. And I'm going to talk a lot more about submodules in another video, but that's where the state of this is right now is I'm going to submodule out all this, uh, all this, all these other projects that all these other libraries that I'm including. And that way I don't have to manually configure them anytime I change them. So, uh, let's just 
CD. I'm just going to go to it real quick. It's uh, storage, source, repos, mat, and then ancient archer. And then we'll check the branch. This is probably really tiny, so I'm going to zoom it way in for the vid. So you can see we have a master development branch. I'm on the development branch. And if I do git sub module, there is currently nothing. So basically what you can do is you can do git sub module add, and then you type in the repo. So rather than having to uh, clone whatever your library is in a different directory, you can just sub module it. And anytime you clone, anytime you clone this project, you can uh, you can do a git clone with recursive and get all the sub modules and that way anytime you clone the project from a new computer you can just run uh, git sub module or git clone project name and then recursive and you'll get all the sub modules it'll just build them and the whole point of that is you can, I can just go to another computer and with one or two commands and git I can be ready to work on this project, whereas previously I would have to clone this project, clone uh, all the repos individually that it relies on, make sure they're mapped correctly. And with sub modules, it's just a one-time thing. So my overall goal here is basically make this really easy to work on. And uh, it it's gonna take some work to get to that, but sub modules seems to be about the best way to get libraries working easily. And I'm gonna do another video on that, so stay tuned. So that's basically where I'm at with Ancient Archer right now. It is still somewhat of a mess uh, as far as what to do. This code is all going to be changed. The modules are all going to be changed. And it, so stay tuned. In the next video, I should have animations working too. I should have all the sub modules sorted out. And I should make, it should be really easy to just clone and start working with. And I guess the next step after that is I'm probably going to get it all set up for CMake. Because right now it's Visual Studio only. Although I'm using code that would allow you to build it on any OS, like this should work on Mac, Linux, Windows, but right now I only really have it set up to run in Windows. And I also, as it is on this development branch, I kind of put a little, kind of, I literally put a, a little text thing here that allows you to pick what you want to do so I can test the base loop. So it doesn't just pop up Windows on you without you knowing what's going on which is basically what it was doing previously in this base loop. Just, just make sure that the loop actually works, give you, give you a bunch of updates about what's going on. So if I pause it and go to this window, you can see what it's doing. I basically got a bunch of C outs to tell you what's going on. And uh, let's see, and to quit, we just close the window. Let me hit, I'll hit stop on here. So if I go to demo world, this is actually pretty not, this is not right currently but i've uh, you know one of the biggest things about this that probably and i've said it before the open jail stuff kind of wonky i'm going to make that a lot better i might even do something else with it but i think i'm going to stick with open jail for now um as you can see it's not loading the textures and colors right and something with the lights isn't quite right and that's all that's a shader problem I'm not that's not really what i'm focused on but all the windowing and input is uh is pretty nice so i'm really happy with that uh, I've just been kind of putting off the rendering aspect because I really like structuring things and getting things nice and smooth. But as you can see, I can press tab and then I can get a mouse control. So uh, it's pretty easy to set up for, hey, you're in a game here and maybe you want to go into your inventory. So you press a button to go to your inventory. You're first person here. You want to go to your inventory and get your mouse. You can do that and it tells you your mouse location over on the console just as a sample. So you could register clicks. Oh, I also have sound, so if I left click, I don't know if you can hear that. I don't think it's picking up my audio. But yeah, I have a couple uh, left click, right click to make some sounds, just a little sound demo. So everything actually works pr pretty good. Just need to sort out, you know, just basically need to organize it a little better. And let's see, RPG game, there's nothing in there, and I can just quit. All right. So I, yeah, I'm basically just going to, the next steps here, reorganize, get all the libraries sorted out, fix the rendering, fix the animations. It's a whole lot of fixing. And uh, I basically have to be in the right mood or mentality to start restructuring uh, to, for me to really do that. 
but I've been really kind of uh, interested in other things and messing with other things. And it's nice to have a nice fresh project to test out some of these methods and uh, some of these new library things before I dive in and start adding it in on here. Like even this random, I have a library for random now that I can just sub module in rather than have this whole random file. So ultimately these are going to get deleted and I'm going to sub module in the random heck, heck I'll, I'll do that right now, actually just as a little sample. So I'm going to remove all this random stuff, get it out of here and let me just sub module in the random. So you guys can kind of see that get, sub module okay i'm in the right one i'm in development okay sub module add and let me get my random directory here give me a sec here it is here's my repos got a bunch of stuff going on here uh, i'm searching for rand in this user so rand isn't anything that special other than it's a dll for randomization it, uh, if we look, take a quick peek at the code, uh, which is going to be right here, I think is most, well, it's the header. It's basically, it basically has some really basic functions to get the randomization you want, or you can just type in a roll 1d2, roll 1d20, whatever you want to do. So it's just a library to make randomization super easy. And that's really all it is. It, uh, it uses, Chrono and random from the standard library. And it's just a, a, a really nice, reliable randomization library where you don't have to rebuild it from scratch every time. So uh, submoduling it in this would be nice. So let's go to the clone here, clone, copy this, and we will go back here and there we go. Paste it in. Didn't do anything. What on earth? Okay. So uh, apparently it just didn't copy. Interesting. Copy, copy. Yes, for real. Copied into my clipboard. All right. So get submodule add. Paste. We got it. All right. So when you do this, just an add, it go. It just clones it right off the bat there, and it's ready to go. Now you do have to do a quick configuration in Visual Studio, quick build. So what I will do next is I'll just close this. We're back in here. I'm going to hit refresh. It doesn't see anything. So what you have to do in your solution here is you've got to right click and do an add existing project. Now if it's a CMake project, you got to do the CMake thing first so you can get the solution uh, in, in there. But otherwise you can just go, let's see, I'm going in the ancient archer. I will now see Rand in here because I sub modulated it in. I'll see it here and there's the project. So I just hit open here and boom, there we go. And now I'll go back to this engine file over on the right side, right click it and go to add reference. And now I just want to reference RAND because it uses random and that handles everything. I don't need to do any more configuring. I don't need to right click and go into properties and do a bunch of stuff. That's what's so nice about this is it just takes away all the manual config. And now when I hit build, it's automatically going to build this library if I need it. And apparently I, I just always get messages as soon as I record. It happens every time. Ah, it, it, it's not, it's a whatever. I guess I should just mute my stuff before I hit record, but I never remember to do that. So we have all the, the randomization in here. And now the important thing about this is, is when I go to commit the changes for this project, since Rand is a sub module, it's, it, it doesn't, it's not going to show it as uh, the Git changes. It's its own little project. So yeah, more, I'll do more on sub modules later, but that's just a really nice way to clean up your project and not have to manually include things. You can just sub module them in and then reference it. And it's, it's literally that simple. And that, that way you can, uh, it really will save you a lot of time. You won't have to work with package managers, all that. I really like it so far, but I'm still experimenting on that. Okay. Well, I guess that's enough on this. I guess I'll actually I'll finish. So if I build right now, it's going to have an error because it's not probably not going to see all the random stuff. Yeah. One failed doesn't see the random. So now this is just going to be deleted and I've got to include it from that other project. So I sh it should kind of auto see all this. 
where am I using random? Right here. So if I right click on this, it's no longer AA. It's no longer that. It's no longer any of this. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of code updating here. But now it should see this n to k random from the reference project. So when I do a right click and you know the quick actions refactoring, it should I should have the option to include it. And there it is. Is this the right one though? I don't know. I guess I could do a quick. Oops. I could quickly find out by doing something like this, going in here. And I actually don't need this here anymore, so I'll just delete it. And now it shouldn't see that at all. And if I right click and include it, save again, now it should be happy. Yeah, so let's hit build again. And I should still be able to have my randomization. This is just a randomization of throwing those boxes around. So if I look at demo world, I'm still getting randomized boxes now from that rand DOL library that I just submoduled in. And I no longer have to maintain and mess with the module separately in a bunch of different places. It's, it's just that one repo for all the projects. If this gets updated, it'll get updated along with all the projects. However, you do have to update it manually. And I think uh, if I remember correctly, it's like git submodule update, I think is all you do. And if there's any, any new updates for it on the project, it'll pull them down. Next time you build, it'll take it. So that's where this project is going. I've got a lot of work to do. Like I mentioned, libraries, rendering, structure. I'm still planning on keeping it a scripting engine. And I might actually just end up turning it into a game instead of an engine. I don't know about it being an engine. Right now, it's just a, basically an engine where you can lambda in everything about how your world works. All right. Well, I'm out. See you guys in the next episode. Hope you enjoy this. Let me know what you think down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more coding and tech stuff. Peace out.